Radon, the gas, what you don't know. Uh, I am Preston Samlin with Home Inspection Carolina. So uh, let's talk a little bit about radon. What is radon? Radon is a gas. How does it affect us and where does it come from? Radon is the decay product of uranium. Radon is a contaminant that affects indoor air quality worldwide. Radon gas comes from natural sources that can accumulate in buildings, um, especially in confined areas such as homes with basements. What is radon? How does it affect us? How does it access the home? 85 to 95% of radon found in homes enters through the soil. You can see in the picture, um, it likes to come up, uh, let me see if I got a little cursor here, although there's not an arrow here, it likes to come up around that uh, expansion gaps around the soil, um, all kinds of ways. And the other thing is, if your home is heated, there's a stack effect where warm air rises, so it actually creates a suction right on the ground. So <laughs> your house is actually a suction for, for radon gas that's uh, down in the ground. Yeah, stack effect. Your home acts as a natural vacuum. As warm air rises through and out of the home, it creates negative pressure or vacuum with the soil underneath or adjacent to the home. Radon gas then enters through openings in the slab and the foundation. Mechanical ventilation will also have an impact on the stack effect. You can see here is the pictures. See it's coming from the soil, it's entering the home, and that warm air is rising, which is actually uh, creating a bit of a suction, which is a uh, you know, compounding the problem. What is radon and how does it affect us? And what are the causes? Did you know that over 21,000 people die a year of lung cancer connected to radon? That's more than drunk driving, more than falls in the home, more than drowning, more than house fires. What is radon and how does it affect us? The estimated 2010 U.S. mortality rate for selected cancers, leukemia, uh, lymphoma, um, lung cancer, all the lung, 21, 21, all in the 21,000s. Um, you can see that all the other cancers almost put together don't add up to the problems, the, the cancers associated with um, lung cancer and radon which we'll talk about here, it damages lung tissue and makes us susceptible to lung cancer. So what is radon? How does it affect us? Three variables that influence the risk of radon-induced lung cancer. The level of radon the person is exposed to, the length of time the person is exposed to that level, whether the person is never a smoker or an ever smoker. What is radon? How does it affect us? Radon risk if you have never smoked. And these, if you look down the left column, um, this is how it's measured. Two picocuries per liter, one picocure per liter. And by the way, the EPA estimated level is four picocuries per liter where uh, action has to be taken to reduce. So that's, as far as the, the uh, United States EPA is concerned, that's the level at which uh, they recommend uh, uh, mitigation. Um, but you can clearly see uh, the risk and the induced risk. Now, um, and this is for non-smokers. Now watch, I think the next one's if it's smokers. Look how much it goes up if you've been a smoker. So if you're a smoker and exposed to radon, at certain levels for a certain amount of time, it's, it's really bad. Okay, what is radon? How does it affect us? Let's look at the breakdown and how it affects us. Um, Short-lived radon, prog <clears throat> progenity principal hazard to uranium workers. Long-lived radon, principal hazard from fallout. Um, you can see over time, this is the uh, atomic mass. So what's happening is the radium is breaking down and as it breaks down, uh, radon gas is released and when you breathe in that radon gas and it decays further, energy is released that, that damages your lung tissue. Um, this is a radon map of where, although high levels of radon can be found all over, 
this is kind of where you have more uranium deposits where the dark red is. Um, I primarily live in zone two and three. Um, I live in Charlotte area, which is right here. Um, however, we have mountains um, and, and we do have high radon levels around here. This is because you're in zone three doesn't mean you can't have it over four PTQ per liter. And by the same token, just because you're in zone one doesn't necessarily mean that you have it. Um, but you certainly have higher concentrations of it in, in these parts of the country. Um, this particular presentation I was doing in um, South Carolina, so that's why we have the South Carolina map. Um, we live right here in Charlotte. Um, the Appalachian Mountains run through here, so you've got this one county um, that's actually a zone one, um, but these are zone two. But, you know, I recommend every house test for radon. I think every house. The only way to know is if you test. Um, if you're in South Carolina, this is the uh, state radon officer, uh, Rochelle Tolton. Uh, here's her phone number. Um, the average national radon level is about 1.3 picocuries per liter. Um, we'll talk about what is a picocurie. A picocurie, curie is the person who discovered radon and how to measure. Uh, pica is 100. Um, Got a little bit of a graph here. Um, this is for South Carolina. 88% were below two picocuries per liter. 13% um, were between two and nine. 8% were four picocuries and above. So you know what that tells me is eight chance of eight and 100, you're gonna be over four picocuries, get it tested. I mean, why would you take that chance? Uh, that's four out of 50 or uh, two out of two out of 25. So, I mean, that's actually, I mean, you want to get that tested. What is radon and how does it affect us? Um, there's an interactive map. If you go to www.radon.com uh, forward slash maps, and this is for South Carolina or any um, state, if you're looking at this and you're from another state, um, the, you can go to this website and uh, see the interactive map. Radon, how do we test for it? There are two different types of testing. Uh, there's a, a passive and an, uh, an active test. A passive is gonna be the canisters or the bags, charcoal test, um, and the active test is gonna be continuous monitors. There's advantages and disadvantages for both. We'll talk about those in just a second. Um, Canisters or charcoal ones are usually, you know, you can buy these at Lowe's Home Depot. Depot. Uh, you can get them at uh, South SCDHEC Government Environmental. That's your home. You can get it. That's free. You can buy it at Lowe's or Home Depot for I'm not, around 15 bucks. Um, they are very accurate if you follow the directions, um, and they're inexpensive. So that's a check, check, uh, pros. Uh, a downside on it is it's going to take you about a week to get the results back. Um, that's a con if you're in a real estate transaction where time is the essence. But if you're just checking your own home, it may not necessarily be a con. Um, here's the real con if it's a real estate transaction. If you're checking somebody else's house, once you leave that house, they can manipulate the test. They can put it in the freezer, put it outside, and then once you come back, you would never know it if you if they put it back where it was. So there's no way to know if they've tampered with it. Um, with a continuous monitor, they can tell that. Um, again, they're accurate, they're cheap, um, takes a little time to get the results, and they're good. They're okay for testing your own house just for information. Um, now this is a continuous monitor, um, very accurate, not cheap. <laughs> Probably going to be 150 to 200 dollars to get this done by a radon professional. They're going to have to come out two times, um, and both tests have to sit for at least 48 hours. The way this works is it takes a test every hour and then averages them, and it, it'll give you a readout or the radon professional uh, a readout. And uh, if there was any tamper on it, they move the box, they open the door, left the windows open, anything like that. Um, and it'll, it'll throw the test. 
So you can't manipulate this. So probes, very accurate. Uh, get the results as soon as they come back. I mean, it's immediate after the testing period. Pro. Uh, con, it's a little bit expensive. Um, pro is that it does have tamper-proof or uh, built-in mechanisms that uh, keep keep somebody from tampering with it or trying to modify the results. So how do we test for it? It's recommended that the home be tested by a certified radon professional if it's a real estate transaction. This will ensure proper testing and credible testing results. If not performed by CRP, the results could be questioned. There is no regulation on radon testing by the states of North and South Carolina. If you're testing your own home just for information, I would recommend getting the, the charcoals because um, you're not going to try to manipulate your own testing. You'll probably follow directions. Real estate transaction, I'll get a certified radon professional. Um, radon, how do we test for it? You can access a list of certified radon professionals at ncradon.org or sdhcc.gov environmental your home radon. Um, find a radon certified professional, you'll see that. All right. How do we test for it? Understanding test results. What levels are recommended to require a mitigation system by the EPA? 4.0. 4.0 picocuries per liter. What does that mean? What is a picocurie? Um, again, P pico is 100. Curie is the person that uh, uh, found radon and figured out how to measure it. The EPA recommends that a homeowner consider mitigation when the level is between 2 uh, and 4. There is no true safe level. The lower the exposure, the lower the risk. Pico means, I'm sorry, Pico means one trillion. Curie's is the last name of the founder of Radium, Mary Curie. So what is a Pico Curie? The rate of decaying process that can cause cellular damage to lung tissue that can lead to lung cancer. So how do we fix it? Radon mitigation systems. Install a radon mitigation system. Systems typically range from $1,500 to $2,500. Systems can be far less to install if, in, if the builder installed and during new construction process put the beginning of the, the uh, pipes in it. A lot of the new buildings, are, are they're putting the pipes in ahead of time. So, I mean, the, the heavy lifting on it's already done. Um, though this is becoming more common, the use of nationally certified and trained professionals to install these systems are not. So let me kind of show you how the um, radon mitigation system works. Here's the uh, the pipes. They've got two pipes coming in, and they're basically pulling it up. And right here is a fan. This is the fan. It sucks it out and pushes the radon gas outside the house. Um, so they, they basically drilled a hole, and they've got a place there where you know it can pull in any gas they're also going to seal up anywhere else around the cracks that sort of thing and and basically they're pulling out that that radon gas away from the house here's a radon mitigation system that's the fan right there here's a drawing of one typical inst installation would include an active sub slab depressurization system uh, this would be essentially the same process for a basement slab on gray. Crawl space mitigation systems can be installed when necessary. However, they are less common and more costly. Okay, so on the radon mitigation system, you'll usually see this. Um, this lets you know that the fan's working, the suction's working. Um, when they should be uneven, so that's pulling a suction. If they use this liquid just so you can tell, and if they're if they're even, that means there's no suction on there. It's, the fan is not operating. North Carolina radon funding. Funding is available for homeowners that are in poverty and must meet a certain criteria. If they meet the criteria, complete funding will be made by um, NCHFA. If they do not meet the criteria, there are loans available by self-help. All information can be found at ncradon.org. For more realtor information, please go to ncradon.org, uh, Radon Real Estate. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope you got um, something out of this. Um, if you need any more information about radon or home inspections, please go to uh, www.homeinspectorcarolina.com 
or you can call us at um, 704-542-6575. Thank you very much.